Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We bless you, Jesus. We honor you tonight, Lord. You are exalted. Your kingdom reigns forever. You are sovereign and you are holy, O oh God. There is no one like you in all the earth. We magnify you, Lord. We thank you for the victory in Christ Jesus, for your great. Your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God, you are awesome. You are holy. There's no one like you in all the earth, oh God. Our soul shall make its boast in the Lord and be glad in it. Good evening, cousin of Maryland. Good to see you. We're going to get started in a minute. Hallelujah. Just uh, waiting a few minutes, trying to set things up still. And God is good. The Lord is good. His mercy, the word says, endures forever. There's no God like our God, no matter where we go in this world. We'll never find anybody like the Lord who can heal and deliver and set us free like our God can. What a mighty God we serve. He's sovereign. He's holy. He's majestic. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is our refuge and our strength. Very present help in trouble. We magnify him because of his goodness and his mercy endures forever. But thou, O Lord, our shield about us, you're the glory and the lift of our heads. We thank you, Father. We bless you. We magnify you, Lord. We, our souls make us boast in the Lord. The humble share hear of it and be glad. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence dwelling in our midst today. We thank you, Lord God, for bringing us through today. In spite of the trials and the tests we had to encounter, we thank you, Lord God, for the victory we have in Christ Jesus. We thank you that you are Lord over everything the devil brings our way. And our Father God, our hearts rejoice in you. It makes us boast in who you are. Lord, you're great. You're a sovereign. You reign forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to start off with a prayer from my book, The Prayers that Rock Demons. I'm going to do a prayer that's against demonic princes. Just before I got started this evening, I was outside with a couple of brethren and from the building. Well, so it's a couple of men from the building. Because they're not my brother. If you ain't walking with the Lord, you're not my brother. But I tell you, um, this one brother intoxicated. I told him I was doing a class at 6 o'clock and asked him if he could at least keep the noise down a little bit. He started getting hostile and yelling and telling me I'm trying to take his constitutional rights away from him. I said, you know what, brother? You do you. Whatever you decide to do, that's on you. You know, I just asked you to do something, but that's okay. And then um, tell him, call the police on me. Call the police. And I said, you know what, brother? It ain't even about all that. You do you. You know, God bless you. God bless you. And I, I started walking away. Well, he, he kept talking and yelling and saying things. I said, God bless you. And one thing I learned about when the demonic forces are trying to attack you and you walk away from it, you leave them powerless. They have no power over you. And the enemy wants to bring accusations. He wants to bring hostility. He wants to bring you to a place of malice and anger and where you begin to uh, vent and blurt in retaliation. He wants to bring you to that place where he can break you down. But thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. So I just want to share that. Someone may need to hear that. You don't have to fight your battle because Jesus already won the victory. The devil is a lie. We have the victory. We're overcomers. We're stronger than the Lord and the power is might. 
the word says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. We can stand on God's word with confidence, knowing that the devil is defeated. He is powerless over you until you give him the power. We have to learn how to use the word of God. Even when Jesus said, bless those who persecute you, bless and curse not. For so persecuted the prophets who went before you. So we have to bless our enemies. And when you bless your enemies, what you're doing is leaving them in the hands of the Lord for God to deal with them. You don't have to retaliate with them. You don't have to argue with them, become argumental. You don't have to uh, uh, respond to them the way they're, re they're responding to you. You can speak God's word with authority and, and in your heart. Keep on praying you, and, and de declaring God's word because the devil, he can't stand when you decree God's word. So as I began to just pray inwardly as I walked away, I said, God bless you. God bless you. And he just started yelling back, God bless you too. I said, thank you. God bless you. And I kept walking away. You know, one thing about when God is in your heart and you truly yielding to him, he teaches you how to have temperaments, temperance. That means self-control. You, you, you learn how to humble yourself before the Lord and God will respond when the enemy comes against you the way he chooses to shut the mouth of the enemy. And that's one thing I have to learn. I don't have to argue and fight with people who come to, come to me with hostility. I don't have to give in to that. The devil, it, it's so much going on around us to where the people of God are falling into hostility and anger and bitterness and misery and, and confrontational. Will one have to win the battle? One thing about it, you never win when two people are arguing. I learned from my parents years ago, if you argue with a fool, you become a fool. So I learned how to be quiet, let them argue with themselves, and walk away. And when you do that, the Proverbs 15 one says, A soft answer turneth away wrath. Grievous words stirs up anger. And when I did that, I felt so much peace in my heart. Because I know I've done what God had ordered me to do at that moment. Instead of wanting to strike him across his face with my fist, I ca caused myself to stay at peace by yielding to the Spirit. I caused myself to stay humble at that moment, to not blurt out in retaliation. Because there's so many things that going through my mind. And the Bible said, cast down every imagination and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And at that moment, I saw God at work while I cast down my imagination of retaliation. We can do this. We can do this when we yield to the Spirit of God. So let's go into prayer at this moment. Then we're going to get into our lesson tonight. We have a good lesson we're starting tonight. It's dealing with the spirit of perversion. The spirit of perversion is an evil spirit that causes you to turn away from what is good to do what you want to do when God has ordered you to do righteousness and, and live in truth. But instead, we do the opposite. We do what appeases our flesh to satisfy ourselves. And in return, we lead ourselves to a damnable destiny, which leads to hell, fire, and brimstone. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, you cast out the prince of the world and defeated him. Jesus, you spoiled principalities and you and made an open show of them. I bind the prince of the power of the air in the name of Jesus. I bind and rebuke Beelzebub, the prince of demons. I bind the principalities and powers in my region in the name of Jesus. I command the principalities to come down in the name of Jesus. Lord, release your warring angels against the demonic princes. The enemy that comes against us, God, the people of God. Father, send forth your angels to destroy them in the name of Jesus. Smite the princes as the days of old. Bring the iniquity of every profane prince to an end and remove a diadem from his head, which is their crown. Lead the princes away spoiled and overthrow the mighty. Make the, no the nobles like Oreb and like Zeb and all their princes like Zeba and Zamuna. Father, that you crush them, that you destroy them. Pour contempt upon the demonic princes. Cut off the 
the spirits of the princes. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your power fall afresh on us, God, that our ears will be open to hear your voice speaking to us, oh God, that we will not give in to the demonic activities, the demonic wiles and attacks that come against us, but we're standing with the full armor of God to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. I bind and rebuke all the princes that will speak against me and my household, my family, my children, that will try to afflict them with sicknesses and diseases to destroy their lives, to destroy their mentality, to destroy their hearts, conditions. God, we bind it in Jesus' name. Every satanic attack and assault that has come against our children, God, we rebuke it now in Jesus' name. We send it back to the pit of hell where it come from, and we bring all princes to nothing. The evil princes of the enemy, God, we bring them back to nothing, God, that they have no power or influence over our lives because we're strong in the Lord. We're standing secure under the shadow of the Almighty, secured under your wings, O oh God. Punish the princes with your power, God. Break the head of the dragon in the water, God. Cut off the head of every enemy in the name of Jesus. And then, Father God, break the spirit of pride and haughtiness, and bitterness in the name of Jesus. And allow us, God, to walk in freedom, to stand firm in the faith of Jesus Christ victoriously. And Lord God, anoint this lesson tonight, God, that something will be said or done that will encourage, that will edify, that will build up the people of God tonight, oh God, in a Christian walk with you. Every stronghold, every, every habit, every addiction that does not line up with your word, God, that you break it off our minds, oh God. Because the greatest attack is our minds, oh God. The enemy uses against us to destroy us as ourselves. We become our own enemy, God, when we fail to give in to your truth and walk in your righteousness. But I'm asking you, God, in our weaknesses, that you become our strength tonight. That, Father God, when we find ourselves struggling with certain things in our lives that's not of God, the cursing, the slandering, the backbiting, the hating, the gossiping, the lying, Father God, the sexual sins, oh God, the things that we allow ourselves to be addicted to and attracted to because of the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. I ask you to break the presence of his demonic forces in the name of Jesus and set us free. And then I thank you, Lord God. Because your word says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, his mercy endures forever. We thank you, Lord God, for the mercy that we're not consumed. Because, Lord, if you were to mark our transgressions, who would be able to stand in your presence? And, Lord, I thank you that you give us a revelation tonight, oh God, an understanding as we examine our hearts to see what we have in the treasure box of our hearts, oh God, that's not of God that you begin to purge it out, God, through the refiner's fire to make us pure as gold that we stand in righteousness and truth in your presence every day of our lives. Not saying we're not going to struggle, not saying we're not going to fall, but if we do, God, I thank you that we have an advocate who forever standeth and abideth to make intercession for us. And that's King Jesus. And I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you praise, oh God, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you, God bless you for joining tonight. Good, good to see you, my friend, Rep. Wester. God bless you, Lenice. You know, tonight, you know, this lesson is, is uh, in our book, The Strong Man, What's His Name, What's His Game. The next subject we're dealing with now is the spirit of perversion, the spirit of perversion. The spirit of perversion is a demonic force. That, that causes you to turn away from what God has ordained to be in your life. The enemy wants you to turn away from truth and start walking in unrighteousness. And many times we find ourselves subject to that demonic force because we're not giving in to the word of God. We're not studying God's word. We're not praying. We're not seeking God's face. We're, we're giving in to ourselves. This, in the Bible, the word perversion, it means Turn away from what is right or good, corrupt, improper or co incorrect, contrary to the evidence or direction of the judge on the point of the law, perverse verdict, obstinate in opposing what is right, 
reasonable or accepted, wrong-headed. So we have to make a choice tonight. Am I going to continue to defy God's word and walk in perversion, giving into the things that my flesh wants to do that I know is not of God? The alcoholism, the drug addiction, the pornography, the fornication, the adultery, the lying, all this stuff is perversion of the flesh. Why? Because it originates in the mindset. And when it gets in your mindset, the enemy knows if I can lure you into the trap, I can lure you away from God's word to where I can control your entire destiny. The enemy wants us to be obstinate and opposing what is right. So many people who are in the body of Christ who knows the right way to walk, the right, right way to live, the right things to do, they become stubborn. They become, they become obstinate. That, that means you're just, re, just rebellious, just not going to give into what God says no matter if your life depended on it. You don't even care. That's how the enemy does in our lives. He wants us to get into a place where we falter, and we keep on falling into temptation. We keep on giving into the fleshly desires. We keep on walking in the pathway of darkness. Why? Because he knows that I can get you into that place. I can control your destiny. But tonight, God's word wants us to get an understanding and a revelation of what it is. How we are to live and abide in God's word. So I want you to stay encouraged tonight. Don't allow the enemy to duke you. Don't allow him to manipulate you into falling backwards. When you fall down, the best place to fall is on your knees before the Lord in repentance. And ask God to forgive you for your sins and to restore you into right standing and right relationship with him. Because Jesus paid the price for us, the enemy knows if I can keep you entrapped in, in your relationship with the enemy, I can keep you isolated or alienated from serving God. And that's what's going on in our lives today. Many people have fallen into temptations and trials and tests because of rebellion. And the enemy knows if I can keep you in that place of rebellion, I can stop you in your tracks. Go to James chapter 1. I'll read a few scriptures here. I had another script I was going to in Romans, but I'm going to go to James chapter 1. I really sense the Spirit of God taking me there at this moment. James chapter 1. In James chapter 1, it tells us in verse 21, it says, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness, an overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away and immediately forget what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. God promises us that we'll be blessed when we look into the mirror of the word and we know that our lives have been lined up with God's word, he says we'll be blessed in everything we do because we have been living righteously. If you live in a life of rebellion, a life of sin, a life of wickedness, being stubborn, not repenting, heading in the wrong direction, repent means to change your direction and you're still going in the wrong direction, headed down to the pathway that leads to destruction, the thief come nigh only but to kill, steal, and destroy. When you stay on that pathway, there's a road that leads to life and peace and a road that leads to destruction. You have to choose which road I'm going to walk in. Perversion of the heart is an evil spirit that will cause you to think that what you're doing is right in the eyes of God. 
God wants us to know tonight, my brother and sister, that we have to open our eyes up, begin to see what God sees and do what God says. Turn away from what is evil and turn to what is true, what is right and what is good. So we have to get into the word of God. We have to. There's no way as if but about it. And man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You have to get into the place where you allow the word to get inside of you. Then the word comes out of you. No deposit, no return. Your ear gates needs to line up with God's word. Your ear gates need to receive life from the word of God that produces the word in your heart that will cause your life to be patterned in order in the direction God has for you to go in your life. God says, I know in Jeremiah 17, 11, he said, I know the thoughts and plans I have for you to prosper you and do you no harm. God knows exactly what it takes to get you into the plan, the will, and the purpose that he ordained for your life before the foundation of the world. But we are wrong-headed when we keep on being rebellious and keep walking in iniquity and sin. Now go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. God is going to help us tonight, my brother and sister. If you want to be helped, God is going to help you tonight. Begin at verse 18. I'm going to read something I found as a commentary. It says, what does the Bible mean when it refers to something as perversion? Webster Dictionary defines perversion as a diverting from the true intent or purpose, a change to something worse, a turning or applying to the wrong end or use. So Webster defines it as turning to something worse in your life. Instead of walking in righteousness and truth, doing what's good, you do things that are wrong to become the worst thing in your life. Then you have no more power, no control over it. It controls you. Anything can be perverted. Using opiates for non-medical purpose, medicinal purpose, for an example, is a perversion of the poppy plant. In the Bible, the word translated perversion is used to define a deviation from righteousness in sexual behavior. You hear what I just said? Perversion in the Bible is deviating from God's plan his, his union he created for sexual activities to be between a, a man and a woman, a husband and a wife. He says we take it. He, he says we take that, deviate from it, and becomes a sexual perversion in our hearts. So our behavior becomes patterned after that lifestyle to where I get addicted to having sex so I can't stop and control myself anymore because I gave in it for so long, now it controls me. Satan twists things. He wants to take God's word, perversion, he twists God's word to sound good. When God spoke a word over your life, he'll take it as some sin and iniquity in that word to make that word conducive to your sinful lifestyle. The enemy knows he's very crafty. In each case, there is a warning against using evil things that God created for good. God gives us a warning in his word. We have to make a choice. Am I going to live for God? Am I going to stand on his word, allow his word to bring conviction to my heart, to cause me to line up every day with the, the will of God, the purpose God has for my life, the reason I was created, the ministry God calls me unto, the, the gift God placed my heart to do. Some have the gift of hospitality. Some got the gift of serving. Some have an apost apostolic anointing. Some have a prophetic anointing. Some have a pastoral anointing. Some have evangelist anointing. Some have a teaching anointing. Some has a giving anointing. Whatever it is God instilled in your heart to do, you need to do it wholeheartedly to the best of your ability. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. Your life needs to continue to be inconsistent with God's word. Every good thing God created, Satan works to pervert. God created sexuality and called it good. Sexual union has a dual purpose procreation, and joining marriage partners as one flesh. 
Since the early days, human beings have found twisted uses for sex, for sex that accomplished neither of God's intended purposes. Perversions so were widespread by God. The perversion was so widespread by the time God gave the law to Moses that it, the admonitions against specific perversion had to be included in the details. So what it's saying here, when God was had Moses on the Mount Sinai, giving him the decree and the law to give his people to, to get them in order that they can live a, a life pleasing to God, sexual sin already then ran rampant. So when God had made his laws, now he had to include that in the laws, you know, to, uh, to allow his people to get a revelation that you cannot continue to live this way. According to the scriptures, any sexual activity outside of marriage union of the woman and one man is perversion and condemned by God. The New Testament lists some specific sexual perversions such as homosexuality, adultery, and fornication, stating that those who practice such inherent behavior will not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, in society, people are taught that perversion is the right life to live. Lesbianism, homosexuality, sexual abuse, that it's acceptable. It's the right way to live. Why? Because the mentality have been turned from the truth and righteousness of God's word. So the enemy knows that if I can keep you distorted from the truth, that you never turn to God and walk in righteousness. You'll always walk in darkness. That's why so many people don't mind and it's easy for them to hurt somebody else or kill somebody else because they don't have a conscience anymore. Their conscience have been seared with sin. And that sin has taken control of their lives to where the enemy now uses them and, and causes them to do harm to so many other people, even in their own home, sexual abuse with the children and all this stuff. Why? Because the mindset has been turned from God. We have to allow the repentance to come into our heart. The only way we have repentance is when we get convicted for our wrongdoings. Not sorry because I got caught, but sorry because I'm sorry I broke the covenant of God. I broke God's heart. And when you're sorry the way God chooses for you to be sorrowful, he said godly sorrow draws men to repentance. God bless you, Rita. Godly sorrow draws men to repentance. Repentance, it will turn you back into the right place you need to be in relationship with God. But many times we find it a struggle because we're not turning to God's word on a daily basis. We, we have God's word on a, on a sometime basis. When, when I need God's word, when things are going wrong in my life, I'm going to turn to God's word. But when things are going well, I'm doing good. I'm financially stable. My bills are paid. My mortgage is paid. I'm financially successful. I don't need God. Why? Because I done did everything I did to live a successful life. But all the time, it was God who reigned on the just and unjust. God blesses whom he blesses and curses whom he curses. So we have to not get it twisted when it comes to God's word. He says, study God's word on a daily basis to show yourself approved unto God and work with the need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to get in the word. You got to get in the word. Your word that you need from God is how you're going to live. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. In Romans chapter 1, hallelujah, blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse 27, I'm going to read actually verse 18. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. We can pause right there. When you know God's word, you grew up in church, you learned about God's word, you heard God's word, but yet you suppress God's word because you don't want to live by it, you don't want to hear it, you don't want to be reminded of it, so you stop going to church. 
because you want to live a righteous and sinful lifestyle, and every time you go to church, you get convicted. So you say, well, I'm going to suppress the truth because I, I've been living the way I've been living so long. I'm not going to stop until I get myself ready. How many times have you said you're going to get yourself ready and come to church? The perversions of the heart will not allow you to get yourself ready. No matter how much you practice and try to get yourself ready, you're going to always come up short. The only one that has the ability, that has the power, who knows how to get you right is the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. When you give yourself to the Lord and say, Lord, I need to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I, forgive me for my sins. Wash me clean in the blood. When you make that confession, then God's word begins to activate in your heart. Your conscience now is being cleansed from a dead conscience to a living conscience. So the living conscience, the power of thoughts that was once controlled by darkness is now being transformed into the kingdom of light. So your mindset begins to change because he said, when you get into the word of God, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So now the mind of Christ is being formed in your mentality. So your thought life is beginning to change. I listened to Tim Rogers last night, Pastor Tim Rogers. He was talking about a message last night about uh, uh, the paradigm of, of thoughts. What a powerful message it was because he said paradigm of thoughts is a formulation of thoughts that control your life. And every time we allow ourselves to be in control of our lives, we're living a lie and deceiving ourselves. So we suppress the truth. But then it goes on verse 19. It says, because what, they may, what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. We have no choice without excuse. God reveals his word to us. It is up to us to get in the word of God and allow that word to merit it in your heart to change your destiny. God revealed his word to us, but yet we still walk in darkness. Why is that? Perversion. Perversion is darkness. If the gospel be hid, it's hid to them who are lost, whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them. You cannot walk in light and walk in darkness. If you go into a dark room and you don't flip the switch for the light to come on, guess what's going to happen? Whatever you got in that room and you don't know the way your room is designed, you're going to stumble over stuff, you're going to trip over stuff, you might even fall and bump your head. Why? Because you're walking in darkness. The same way it is in the spirit. Every time you walk in darkness, you bump your head. Every time you walk in darkness, you trip and fall. Every time you walk in darkness, you're blinded from the truth. So when God wants to reveal the truth to you, you're not listening because your ear gates have been clotted with the sin of the world. God wants to unstop our hearing tonight. He wants to unmute your hearing tonight. He wants to open up your ears to hear him speaking to you by divine revelation to help restructure, recreate you back into the place that his image and his likeness will be revealed through your life. But then it goes on. It says, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because all they knew, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. You know the truth, you heard the truth, God revealed it to you the truth, but yet you choose to maintain a stand in darkness. And God says that you are without excuse. Every time we give into perversion, we're slapping God in the face, telling God, your word ain't good enough for me. The blood of Jesus wasn't good enough to cleanse me. Your, your, your power couldn't save me. Why? Because my heart is darkened. 
But I want you to know tonight, my brother and sister, we can change that. And we're going to change that if you allow God to come into your house where you are. He's going to change your thinking tonight. He's going to change your attitude. He's going to change your character. But then he says, professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into the image made like corruptible man and the birds and the four-footed animals and creeping things. So because of the darkness of the heart, now you, you turn to your idols, your materialistic things, the things that make you comfortable, the things you have in your house, your automobiles, your businesses, your, your money. You're loving all the stuff of the world now, the partying, the drinking, going to the clubs, hanging out with groups of people, just having parties all the time and not giving in to God. So because of this, God says your heart is darkened. So now you made an image that you worship. Instead of worshiping the true God, now you worship your image. And God says, because of this, his judgment is going to fall upon you. We have to get back in place with God. Because when you think you're wise, he said, you're a fool. We think we're wise what we do sometimes. The decisions we make, when it comes to making a, a, a decision, about moving or re relocating to other places or buying a house and buying an automobile. What church should I go to? What job should I get? All this stuff, we make our own decision without consulting God. And that's what God is talking about because we, we, we leave God out the equation. We're telling God, I don't need you. I got this. How many times we said to ourselves, I got this. I don't need nobody else's help. I can fix my own problem. I'm mentally tormented. I'm in, I'm in confusion. I'm depressed. My heart is weighed with heaviness. The burdens on my, sh on my, my, my shoulders, the yokes are destroying me. All this stuff in me keeps throwing at me from left and right. I'm in a storm. And every time I turn and try to get out of it, worse things get. God will allow you to get in a storm. Just like he did the disciples. Many times we talk about this in our churches. How Jesus sent the disciples ahead of him to go to the other side of the lake. And he came walking on the water. And Peter said, Lord, if it's you, let me come out to the on the water to you. We talk with all the time. But God will let you get in a storm to test your faith. If you are a child of God and you've been walking in rebellion, you've been stubborn, you've been resistful to God's truth, you keep, keep doing things your way, God will let you get in a storm. And in that storm, he says that's the best place to be because the storms tear up stuff. The storms tear, stir up stuff. The storms become chaotic in our lives, which forces us, which it should force us to turn to the Lord. So in the process of turning to the Lord, God got your attention because he know in this storm, the storms will weaken you. It will cause fear in your heart. It will cause you to be broken down. It caused you to be hurt, the way people treat you, the way they talked about you, the way they slandered you, the, the way they cursed at you, the way they beat you with their words. All these different things is in a storm. And in that storm, it's perversion. God says in this storm, storms come with different purposes. Storm, some storms come to wash away a lot of filth and scum of the earth. Some storms come to destroy things. Some storms come to give you confidence that God is on your side. But we have to choose that in the storm, what our response is going to be. Amen. So, but then he goes on. He said, therefore, therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who bless, who is blessed forever. Amen. Isn't that something? Because 
of the stiff-necked people because of the perverted hearts, because of our wicked lifestyles, because of our sinful ways, because of the unregenerated mindset. God says the uncleanness, the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God's word for a lie and worship the creature rather than serving God. We're living in a generation today. This pandemic has swept across the land. Over 200,000 people have died. And yet people still won't turn to God. There are still going to be people, if you read in Revelation, when Christ comes back, there are still going to be people that will not repent. The Bible tells us that. That even after chance, after chance, after chance, they would rather die in their sin than turn to the Lord. For this reason, God gave them up to the vile passions, the uncleanliness, the wickedness, their passions, the evil desires, the corrupt desires. For even their women exchange the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman and burn in their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty for their error, which was due. Women loving women, men loving men, perversion of the heart, uncleanness, vile affections, all this stuff, God said, you receive the penalty for the life you choose to live. God have mercy on us today. God have mercy. Because we're living in a perilous time. We have to make up our mind. Am I going to serve God? Or am I going to continue to live the life I choose to live without God? In the life of without God, is a life that leads to hell and damnation. And in that life, you're going to find yourself in a place called the lake of fire to burn for eternity. You know, many times I was out there in sin in my younger days of life, living the life of perversion, drinking and partying, went to Bible college, stopped going to school, because of just stubborn, rebellious, wicked. Started living a riotous life to where I had nowhere to turn but to call my parents that I need to come back home because I lost everything. God let me lose my job twice. Let me lose my, my place I was staying at. And then I came back home and still was living a riotous life, even living at home. But I thank God for grace because God saw grace down the road for me that down the road, I'm going to get his attention. Down the road, I'm going to cause a word to be spoken over his life and into his heart, going to captivate his attention, going to change his desire. And when it changes his desire, he's going to burn with a lustful desire for me instead of the things of the world. I thank God for that because only a God like that can change your life when you give it to him. So many times we walk in darkness and we know we're not living right for God, but we keep on doing the same things like a broken record that's been scratched. It keeps playing the same old part of the song over and over and over and over and over till it becomes annoying. The enemy does the same thing in your life he keeps playing the same old stuff in your mind to keep you staying in sin so long. He take you further than you intend on staying to keep you there so you can die in your sin. His M.O. is to kill you in the process. But God knows those who are his. So God says, you know what? I know that one's mine. I know that one's mine. Now nah, they're going to reject me. So I'm going to let that one go because they're going to go to hell. But I know this one here. Down the road, he's going to hear the word of the Lord. He's going to repent of his sin. He's going to give his life to me. Then he's going to have a ministry call in his life, a pastoral call that's going to elevate him. He also have a prophetic anointing on his life. 
I'm going to use this man to speak to many different people in his life, in his pathway, during his journey of life, as long as he lives and walk in obedience to my will. God says it about you. He knows your life that he ordained to be, but yet the enemy come along to speak a word that distorts the plan of God for your life to keep you away in blindness so you won't hear God's voice speaking to you or see him speaking to you because he wants you to be deaf, dumb, and lame. You got a lot of deaf, dumb, and lame people going to church 30, 40, 50 years and still have not repented. But God says those type of people who live that lifestyle, your end is the penalty for your sin. I would rather repent right now, ask God, come into my heart, forgive me for my sin, than to keep going down a pathway to lead me to destruction. I don't know about you, but every day I wake up in the morning, I thank God for his grace and mercy. I thank God I can wake up and praise him because he's been too good for me not to praise him. Defeated cancer. Brought me through AIDS virus when I should have died years ago. All these different things in me thought was going to take me out. God said, nope. I'm going to build a testimony. I'm going to use your life to touch somebody in their life journey, going to turn their destiny around to come back to me. I hope you listen tonight with your spirit ears. Allow God's word to minister to your heart because God knows what you need to hear to change your life. Many times we hear God speaking, but he said to the children of Israel, he said, today is the day of salvation. Harden not your hearts as in a day of provocation when the children of Israel provoke the Lord to wrath. We can provoke God's judgment on our lives because of our sin. We can provoke God's punishment to fall upon us because of rebellion, because of stubbornness, because of the wickedness of our hearts. Jeremiah, he, he tells in one of the writings, that he said that the heart of man is desperately wicked. No one knows it but God. But God says, I'm going to give you what you the reward you deserve. Because I know your heart is wicked. But I want you tonight to get into the place where you hear God speaking to you and allow the word of God to transform your thinking. We're going to continue this next week. Because I really feel God speaking to us tonight to get our attention. Because somebody on here tonight needs this word to help order their steps in the right way. They've been going in the wrong direction. They've been walking and living in darkness. They've been hurting and they've been struggling. They've been in poverty. Everything's been going wrong in their lives. But God says tonight, when you turn your heart to him, I know the thoughts and plans I have for you to prosper you and do you no harm. I know exactly what I need to do in your life to turn your life around and to put you on a, on straight street, on straight straight street, God says that's what every promise that I have for you is going to manifest, because He knows that when you turn your heart to Him, I'm going to cause your eyes to come open, your hearts attentive to His voice. I'm going to cause you to hear His voice speaking to you. I'm going to cause your your antennas, your spiritual antennas, to come alert. He said, I'm going to cause everything about you. Jeremiah 20 and 11, if I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, they are plans of good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. He says, in those days when you pray, I will listen. So God wants you to know tonight, my child, my brother, my sister. God says, I have plans for you. And in that plan is prosperity. A lot of people think prosperity is about monetary things. No, it's about the spiritual things of God prospering in your heart. The peace, the love, the joy, the lonesome, the goodness, the meekness, the temperance, the self-control. The fruit of the Spirit, God wants to prosper you in the fruit of the Spirit that your life will line up to be exemplifying of Christ, that when people see you, they see the Christ in you. And when Christ is revealed through you, the monetary part, it's the benefit of your life lining with God's word. Then he says, the plans are good and not to do you harm. So God's plans for you is to cause you to have success in everything you do, in relationship, in marriages, 
in your home, in your children's life, in your businesses, everything you do, God wants it to line up with his word to prosper. I guarantee somebody don't like this word tonight, but it's okay because God gave it to me. I'm going to speak it anyhow because I know that when your life turns around, you begin to seek God's face and pray. God says, I will listen to you. So as we come to the end of our session tonight, we're going to continue this next week, dealing with the perversion spirit and how to overcome that thing, how to break it off our lives. I pray that you're learning something. I pray that it's, it's, it's sticking to the core of your heart, convicting you, bringing a change in your life. I, I'm sick and tired of myself falling into sin sometimes. And I thank God that the words he gives me hits me first. It convicts me first. It, it gives me a heart and a mindset to change, to hear God speaking, obey God's word, walk in God's word. You can do this. You can do it. God is on your side. He's there to help you, but you got to want his help. God is not going to force himself on you. He's not going to make you turn your life to him, but he's there to encourage you to edify, to build you up in your faith, to strengthen you in your weakness, to help you stand on the word of God, strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So, Father, tonight as we come to the close of another session, I thank you, Lord, for this message tonight. I pray that you continue, Father, speak into our ears. Let it become like a broken record. Just keep repeating over and over in our minds until we just got to keep hearing it. Even as we put so, uh, a favorite song on Rewind, we just keep on playing over and over, God. Let your word ring in our ears over and over and over until it soaks into the core of our heart to bring us to conviction, to change us, to fall on our faces in repentance before you. We ask that you wash us clean from our iniquities and our sinful ways, O oh God, knowingly and unknowingly that you forgive us, God, for our sins and restore us to right standing and right relationship with you. Through your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As always, if you don't know Jesus tonight as your Lord and Savior, I ask you to pray this prayer with me tonight. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you acknowledging that I am a sinner and I need the Savior. I ask you, Lord God, to forgive me for my sins, knowingly and unknowingly, to cleanse me from all unrighteousness, your word says if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm asking you, Lord God, to cleanse me now and come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Then I thank you, Lord God, for saving me. Now fill me with the Holy Spirit and that with the power to be a witness for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 If you have any questions concerning this lesson tonight, feel free to inbox me at Charles Emery on Facebook. Inbox me. And I also put the information on about um, when I gave the post earlier today about the class. If you want to sow a seed into this ministry for the classes tonight, feel free to do that. Allow God to move upon your heart to sow a seed. When you sow a seed, I guarantee God going to restore unto you a hundredfold blessing plus because of the seed you sow in obedience to the word of God. The Lord said, receive a prophet in the name of a prophet you receive a prophet's reward. We're not here to to uh, uh, to uh, 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 try to beg and plead people to give seeds and all this stuff. I don't do that. I leave it up to you to be led by the Spirit uh, of God. If you choose to sow a seed into this ministry, feel free to do so. But if you have any questions, again, inbox me, and I will answer your question next week uh, concerning the lesson. And, and when you get a chance, read Romans chapter 1. Read Romans chapter 1 and James chapter 1. Read Romans chapter 1 and James chapter 1. Allow those that, that word of God to get in your spirit. And when it gets in your spirit, I guarantee you're going to hear God speaking to you. And it's going to be something in your life that the Holy Spirit himself will reveal to you that you know in your heart is not right with God. And he will begin to purge it out of you by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you tonight. And again, thank you for tuning in. Share this video with your friends and family, whoever God put in your heart to share it with. And be blessed. Until next time, shalom.